everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley and I'm an architect in Ontario. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the 12 accredited Master of Architecture programs in Canada. Now, that's right, I said 12, not 11. It's now 12 accredited master programs in Canada. So recently there's been a school that it's been approved by the CACB for accreditation. And so now we have 12 options available to do your master's degree from an accredited program. And so we're gonna go through each program. We're gonna talk about the location, where the architecture is located on campus, and in what province and city. We're also gonna talk about the program length, how many years it'll take you to complete the program. And then we're gonna get into the admission requirements and materials needed in order to get admission into the program. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about the facilities for each program. And so you're gonna get a bit of a beginner guide for all the available programs for, ma for a master's degree in architecture, which hopefully will help you on your process of doing your applications. I remember when I was applying, it can feel overwhelming with all the options that are available and where to start looking and it can really feel overwhelming. So I hope this video is a nice guide for you when you're looking into your programs. And so if this is an interesting topic for you, make sure to like the video and also make sure to subscribe. It helps out the channel and it also tells me that you like the content. So make sure to do that. And now if you're interested, let's get started. Before we get started, I just want to mention that the programs discussed in this video are accredited by the CACB, which is recognized in Canada and the US. So if you're looking to get your license and become an architect, then these programs are recognized in Canada and in the US if you're looking for accreditation. It's also important to keep in mind, and you'll see this while we go through each program, is that the admission requirements vary from program to program. So the content in this video does not replace any of the requirements set out by the program and by the universities with the links down below which have the full information. And if you're seeking more information, I recommend you to also get in touch with the university itself and the administrative team at the program. I also wanna mention that if you do have a five-year bachelor degree, that you're actually eligible to get your education accredited by the CACB. So you don't necessarily need to do a master's degree, but I know based on some of my colleagues, they had a five year minimum, five year bachelor's degree, and they still decided to do a master's degree because they felt that they wanted to get more experience and also get a master's degree to grow personally and so on. And so you can have your reasons to do that. But I want you to know that if you do have a minimum of a five year undergrad bachelor's degree in architecture, then you can get your education accredited through the CACB. And this also includes international graduates as well. So keep that in mind. And I've included some links down below if you're looking for more information, or if you want also more information, I also recommend watching this video here in conjunction with the CACB link down below. So in no particular order, let's start with number one, the University of British Columbia. So the University of British Columbia is of course one of my favorites because I did do my master's degree at UBC and I had a wonderful time and I'll be doing a video specifically in my experience at UBC while I was doing my master's degree. So I'll share some of the insight of my time at UBC which was wonderful. I had such a great time. And the reason why I love this school so much is because it is a well-balanced program. You have a mix of creativity, but also functionality and practicality. So they do not emphasize one thing over the other, and you're still able as a student to explore different topics, and you're not forced to look into one topic specifically because of that's an interest of the faculty. So that was one thing that I really appreciated is that you could explore any topic. UBC is located in British Columbia, BC in Vancouver. Now the campus itself is not located in downtown Vancouver. It's slightly west and it's a bit isolated. It has the ocean surrounding it and it is a bit isolated from downtown, which I would say is one of the setbacks about 
the program, but for me, it wasn't a major drawback of any sort, but I can see how that could be a setback for some people. And although it is far from the downtown, it's not that far away, like some schools that we'll be talking about in this video. So it is a bit further away from the downtown core, but it's not by a lot. I believe if you take public transportation, you can get there in about, I would say, 20 to 30 minutes to the downtown taking the bus. And so I don't think that's too bad. I didn't have any issues per se, but I do feel like if the program was downtown, it would benefit from just having the campus on the downtown core. You're exposed to more of the culture of the city and you get into a bit of also getting inspired by the architecture as well. Now the campus is beautiful nonetheless. It has beautiful views of the mountains as well and the architecture building gets some beautiful views of the nature and of the mountains, which is something really wonderful and unique about the program. Now the program at UBC is a three-year program for students who do not have a background in architecture. Unique thing about UBC is you do not need a background in architecture in order to get into the program. So for example, you can have a background in philosophy, in arts, visual arts, for example, music, and so on, and you can still do your master's in architecture and become an architect without having a bachelor in architecture. So if you don't have a background in architecture, then the program is a three-year program. But if you do have an undergrad in architecture, then you can get advanced standing. And the program is a two-year program. So for myself, because I had a background in architecture and I did my bachelor's in architecture, I was able to get advanced standing. And so the program was actually a lot faster to complete in comparison to those that had no background in architecture. Now let's get into the admission requirements. So again, part of the admission requirements is you don't need to hold a bachelor in architecture. However, you need to hold a bachelor's degree. So you must hold a bachelor's degree that is academically equivalent to a four year bachelor's degree. And so, yeah, again, there's no requirement to have the bachelor's degree in the discipline. So that's something unique to the program. And if you're curious to know and have a complete list of what programs require no background in architecture, then I recommend watching this video here. So in order to get into the program, you need to have a B plus average. And that average needs to be in your third and fourth year level of coursework. And if you've completed your degree at an international university, you must have a B plus average in all your coursework. So overall in your, let's say four years or five year degree, you need to have basically an overall B average in your coursework if you're an international student. Now I recommend looking into the grading system because the grading system from country to country is different. So I do recommend you to check out the grading system in Canada and convert the grades accordingly because they do vary from country to country if you are an international student. And I will keep a link down below if you are looking for a grading system conversion for you. Now let's get into the application materials needed. So first you need to complete an online application form. You need to have a resume, a statement of intent, a portfolio, transcripts, references, an application fee, and for Canadians and permanent residents and so on, the application fee is $108 and for international applicants, unfortunately it is more expensive. It's $168.25. Now it's important to look into the details for each application material and I recommend you check out the link down below to get into the specifics for each requirement. But it, for example, the portfolio require may vary from school to school. So just briefly talking about the portfolio requirements at UBC, the portfolio needs to be submitted digitally in your online application. And the PDF can be a maximum of 20 letter size, eight and a half by 11 pages or 10 spreads and must be under 10 megabytes in size. So these are 20 pages, do not include your cover page or table of contents. And they have specific 
pixels per inch defined as well. And they also go into the intention of the portfolio. So for example, for UBC, the intent of the portfolio is to highlight the design potential, your design potential, and you should, you should use the portfolio to showcase your interests and accomplishments. So for example, if your background is not in architecture, then you do not need to include floor plans uh, and a designed building. They're really not looking for that. What they're looking to see is what are your creative artistic abilities. So if you paint, for example, I would include your paintings, photography, and actually I had a background in architecture and I still included some of the visual arts things I did, pencil drawings, I did a bit of pointillism, um, oil paintings, acrylic painting, uh, I'm just throwing out a few mixed media. Um, if you have uh, physically built things, I would photograph them and use that as well. And this could include handcrafted goods. If you do furniture, for example, that is design as well. So there is a, a wide variety of things that you could include. And the key is to be creative about it and to show your artistic design abilities. So really do go through the specific re requirements for each portfolio in the programs discussed in this video because each school has a different set of requirements so it's important to do that so i would make sure to go through them and i'm not going to go through them in this video because we have a lot to talk about now the application deadline they accept applications for the master of architecture program between october 1st and january 15 of each year so admission decisions are sent out in mid to late March. So make sure to check out the website for more details. And in this video, I'm not gonna get into the tuition costs because let me tell you, I started to collect the info, but they vary so much across all the universities and it's hard to do a real comparison apples to apples because some universities just include the tuition, but then there are you know graduate additional fees charged then there's like other subcharges for administrative costs and so on. And I was just overwhelmed by it all. So if you are interested in particular schools, do go into the financial fees as well and pay attention to the various fees. And a lot of times you're not just gonna get one number. It's not that easy, unfortunately. They're broken up into parts and then there's additional fees here and there. So keep that in mind when you're looking into the fees for each program. Now let's talk about the facility at UBC. So at UBC, they actually have a wood shop with all your basics from a CNC router, um, and a saw and so on. So they have all the basics. They also have a laser cutter, a 3D uh, printer and so on. So they have all the basics that you need. Nothing extraordinary, but they have the basics, which is really honestly what you need. And when I was in the program, I was able to explore what I wanted, but they do not have any robotics and all of that stuff in the program but they do have the basics. Also, the program at UBC also offers a co-op program. So if you're looking to also make some money on the side while you are enrolled in your program, then doing a co-op program could be helpful to make some money and also gain some real life experience in the field. So UBC also offers that option of doing a co-op program. Now, if you're looking for a complete list of what schools offer co-op program in Canada, I would check out this video here where I discuss the programs available that offer co-op programs within Canada. Number two, University of Calgary. And so the University of Calgary offers a Master of Architecture that is accredited. And of course, the campus is located in Calgary itself in Alberta. And it's located slightly northwest of Calgary. The program length at the University of Calgary is a two-year program if you do have an undergrad in architecture. So if you have a pre-professional degree in architecture, then the program is two years. However, if you do not have a pre-professional degree in architecture, then you would do a three-year program. So if you again have, let's say, a bachelor's in philosophy or fine arts, then you would have to do three years because your background is not in architecture. And again, I would recommend, and I forgot to say this for the first university at UBC, I would look into the programs that are accepted as part of a pre-professional architecture degree. So for example, if you're doing something in architectural studies, 
then that may be deemed as a pre-professional or not. So it's important to check with the program and see what is deemed a pre-professional degree in architecture. So make sure to do that. Now let's go through the admission requirements for the program. And so you do need to have a minimum of a four year undergraduate degree, and it does not need to be in architecture and it could be outside of architecture. And of course, if you do have a background in architecture, then you can get advanced standing. Your GPA needs to be a minimum of 3.0 GPA on a 4.0 point system over the past two years of full-time study. Now the program defines what is defined as a full-time study. So I recommend checking that out for more specific details. And you also need to do the English proficiency test if English is not your first language. So for international students, keep this in mind. Now let's jump into the application materials. You need an online application form, a resume, a portfolio, transcripts, references, three, an architectural image paragraph. You need an application fee the non-refundable application fee is 125 Canadian dollars for Canadian citizens and permanent residents. And for international students attending on a study permit, it's $145 Canadian. So those are the application fees. And again, I would get into each application material in further detail for more requirements on the specifics for the portfolio, the resume, the references, transcripts, and the architectural image paragraph, which is unique to uh, Calgary University. Now, the application deadline. So applications for the program are accepted between September 1st and January 15. Now let's get into the facilities at the University of Calgary. They have a laser cutter, they have a 3D printer, they have a CNC router, they have a wood shop, and they have a computer lab. So again, similar to UBC, they have all the basics you need in terms of the facilities to make models and so on. Number three, Carleton University, and the university is located in Ottawa, and the architecture building is located within the campus. Now, the campus isn't in downtown Ottawa. However, it's a few minutes away from uh, the downtown core, like I would say five to 10 minutes, so it's not that far in comparison to some of the other universities in this video. Now let's talk about the program length. Now the program is between a two to three year program. So if you have an undergrad in architecture, a pre-professional degree, then you would do the two year program with advanced standing. And if you don't have a background in architecture, then you would do the three years. So again, if you have an, a bachelor in philosophy, in fine arts and so on, you would do the three year program. The program also offers a co-op program. So if you're looking into working alongside your studies, this could be a nice option and a good opportunity as well to also make some money on the side and gain some practical experience alongside your education. Now let's talk about the admission requirements. So if you have a background in architecture and you have a four year undergraduate degree in architecture, then you need to have a minimum of a B minus. Now, if you do not have a background in architecture, you need to have an honors degree in another discipline with a minimum academic average of a B plus. So it's a B plus if you do not have a background in architecture and a B minus if you have a background in architecture. Or you have to successfully complete the Carleton's Bachelor of Architectural Studies, Urbanism, conservation and sustainability and have a minimum of an academic average of a B plus. So if you actually did your undergrad at Carleton, then a B plus would be the minimum requirement and it's an average. So it would be an average of your four year degree. So I will include a link down below for more specific details, which I recommend you to check out if you are looking into this program. Now let's get into the application materials. So for the application materials, you need to have an online application form. You need to have an application fee that is $100 Canadian and that's non-refundable. You need to have transcripts, letters of references, resume, a writing sample, 
and a portfolio. Now make sure to look into the specific requirements for each of the materials discussed in the video because each school again has different requirements for the portfolio and so on. So make sure to look into those specifics. The application deadline is January 15th. Now the facility at Carlton and I couldn't find more information on this but they do have a wood shop um, and I couldn't figure out or find if they have 3D printers and some of the more modern uh, tools but I would look into that specifically perhaps contact the program for specific information on the facility itself. Number four, Dalhousie. Dalhousie University. Now Dalhousie University is located in Halifax, Nova Scotia. The program is a two-year program and you need to have a background, a pre-professional in architecture. So if you have a background in architecture, a bachelor's degree equivalent to a four-year program, then you are eligible to get into the program. And the program also offers a co-op program, which is definitely unique because there's only a few universities that offer co-op programs. So you're able to work alongside your studies and again, make some money and also gain some practical experience in the real world while you are doing your studies. Let's get into the admission requirements. So you need to have an equivalent of a four year university degree and it needs to be, needs to include architectural studies with a 3.0 grade point average and a B average in design courses. So they're very specific here in comparison to some of the other uh, schools. They actually specify that in your design courses, you need to have a B average. And then an overall in architectural studies, with a 3.0 grade point average. So the previous architectural studies must include courses that are equivalent to the Dalhousie's bachelor's program, the BEDS, the BEDS program courses. So I would check that out and I'll include a link down below to the specifics of the admission requirements, which I recommend you to look into into further details because I'm only doing a summary in this video. Now let's get into the application materials. You need to have an online application form you have to do, complete the application fee and that is $115 Canadian. You need to have transcripts, a portfolio, a statement of intent and letters of references. You need two of them. So again, make sure to go into the specific requirements for each of the materials outlined because they vary from school to school and I'll include a link down below. Now let's get into the application deadlines. Now, if you are applying from the US or from Canada, then all your materials need to be received by February 1st. And for applications from other countries internationally, then you have to receive and send all your materials by December first. If you are a transfer student and you have a pre-professional architecture degree and have not completed all the subjects equivalent to the Dalhousie bachelor's program, the BEDS degree, then you should apply by October 1st and anticipate taking one or more senior undergraduate courses in the winter term, which starts in January to meet those requirements. So I would look into further details on the website for Dalhousie University. Now let's get into the facilities. There was no specific list on the website, but it seems by the photos that I was looking online, they have a CNC router and they seem to have a wood shop, but don't hold me to it because they don't specifically specify it. So if you do have concerns or questions about the facilities and what they offer, I highly recommend getting in touch with the program because the facility is important because you need to be able to build models and so on and you need to have the material at hand. So I recommend looking into that further. Number five, University of Nouvelle. Now, unfortunately, my French is not very good and this particular program is located in Quebec. Now, it seems like the program is mainly done in French and because I wasn't able to really read in French, the program, I'm not able to really inform you about the program itself, but if you are a student that knows French, then I would recommend looking at the University of Nouvelle a bit further. Number six, University of Manitoba. Now the University of Manitoba is located in Manitoba, Winnipeg. Now the program length, it's a two year program and they also offer a co-op program. So it's a two year program and you need to have a background in architecture. If your undergrad does not meet the requirements for a pre-professional degree, then you may need to do 
in uh, architecture master preparation option. And so they offer that. And upon completing the course successfully, then you're able to continue into the MR program and become officially a graduate of admission into the course. Now, the admission requirements are as follows. You need to have four or a five-year bachelor's degree in architecture, architectural design, architectural science, environmental design, architecture option, or equivalent in order to get acceptance into the program. You need to have a minimum GPA of 3.0 or equivalent in the last two full years of study. And for those that are applying to the university from the University of Manitoba Bachelor of Environmental Design degree, you need to have a minimum of a C plus in courses, in specific courses, and the C plus needs to be in courses of EVA R 402, EVA R 404, 408, and 410 is required. So you need to have a minimum of a C plus in those, in those courses. You need to meet the minimum admission and English proficiency requirements for the graduate studies. Now for the application materials, you need an online application form. You need an application fee of $100 Canadian and it's non-refundable. You need transcripts and degree certificates. You need a CV, you need letters of references and that's two. You need a statement of intent, a portfolio and of course proof of English proficiency if, you, if English is not your first language. Now the application deadline for Canadian and US applications is January 15, 2022. And then for international students, you're looking at December 1st of 2021. So those are the deadlines for your application. Now, in terms of the facility, I couldn't get too much information on this specific facility on the website, but I'm assuming based on what I've heard about the program, they do have a wood shop. If you're looking to find out if they have a 3D printer, a laser cutter and so on, I recommend getting in touch with the program administrator for more information. Number seven, McGill. Now McGill is located in Quebec in Montreal and I've heard wonderful things of their campus as well. Now the program at McGill is a two year program and you need to have an undergrad in architecture in order to get into the program. Now let's talk about the admission requirements. So you need to have an equivalency of bachelor of architecture degree for acceptance and you need to have a grade point average of at least 3.0 in order to get into the program. If your bachelor degree is not from McGill, then you need to do a program comparison chart to ensure that your undergrad meets the requirements for the MARC program and for your eligibility into the program. So you would fill out the program chart that's required by the McGill MARC program application and you would actually list the the required you know, technical history courses, prerequisites, which are prerequisites to the MARC program. And so you would list that all in the chart comparison, the program comparison. And so that's on the website and I will include a link down below. Let's review the application materials and you need an online application form. You need an application fee of $117.35 Canadian and it's non-refundable. You need a summary of work experience. So you need a minimum of 16 weeks of work experience is required and further information and work experience guidelines are provided on the website. So I would check out that and you need to have a work experience form filled out. And so you can get that on their website. Now you need to have a resume or a CV. You need to have transcripts, letters of references, at least two. You need to have completed the program chart. So that's the comparison chart. And you also need to complete the course description, the course calendar descriptions from your previous college or universities of study that you've submitted in addition to that program chart. You need to have proof of English if, if English is not your first language and you need to have a portfolio as well. So, and again, I would check out the website, links down below to the program for more information for each of the ad application materials. Now, one of the questions that came up and I thought this was a great question, do you need to have work experience to apply for admission to the MARC program at McGill? and they say you don't. You need to have work experience to apply, but in order to graduate, you will need to fulfill the four month work experience requirement. So as part of the application process, a form detailing your work experience or that or the lack of it 
is required and I would look into the McGill website for more information on that. Now the application deadline is December 15 and the facilities, I couldn't find this specific information for this particular program, but I believe they do have a wood shop. Now do they have a 3D printer and laser cutter? I would look into the program a bit further, get in touch with the administrator for more details. Number eight, University of Montreal. And unfortunately, University of Montreal, the website is in complete French and my French is not very good. So I apologize, but I couldn't translate the requirements to the program. But if your French is really good, I would recommend the University of Montreal as a consideration. So if you are interested in the program, I'll include a link down below. Number nine, Ryerson University, and it's located in Toronto, Ontario, and it is relative to the downtown of Toronto, and it is exposed to all the culture and architecture of Toronto in Ontario. The program at Ryerson is a two-year program and you need to have an undergraduate degree in architecture for this program. Now let's talk about the admission requirements into the program. So you need to have an equivalent of a bachelor in architecture and you need to have a minimum of a GPA of a 3.0 over a 4.33 which is about a B in the last two years of study. So you must hold an undergraduate or a pre-professional degree in architecture that is part of the accreditation program. So if you don't have a pre professional in architecture, then that's going to be an issue in order to be eligible for the program. Now let's talk about the application materials. You need to have an online application form, an application fee of $110, which is non-refundable, a statement of thesis intent, a resume slash CV, letters of reference, you need two, transcripts, a portfolio, and proof of English proficiency is also required. Now the application deadline that I have on file is January 18, 2021. So I'm assuming January 18, 2022. I would double check on the website. Now the facility at Ryerson, they have 3D printers, a wood shop, they have a laser cutter. So they have all of your basics that you would need in order to do your models and so on. Number 10, University of Toronto and the architecture building is located in the heart of Toronto, Ontario. The program, it includes a two year program for advanced standing students. So if you have an undergraduate degree in architecture with the bachelors, then you can get into advanced standing. So you would need a pre professional degree in architecture in order to get advanced standing. And if you do not have an architecture background, then your program would be a three year program. So they do take in students outside of architecture. So you don't need to have a background in architecture in order to get into the University of Toronto. Now let's talk about the application requirements. So domestic applicants must complete an appropriate bachelor's degree or its equivalent with a final year average of at least a mid B from a recognized university prior to the start of the academic term applied to, international applicants need to hold an appropriate bachelor's degree or of its equivalent as assessed by the University of Toronto and use international credentials equivalency tool to see which international credentials are required for the master's programs at U of T. I'll include a link down below with a link to the specifics for the admission requirements, which I recommend you look into. Now let's get into the application materials. You need an online application form, you need an application fee of 110 dollars which is non-refundable, transcripts, a resume, letters of reference, a three, a portfolio, a statement of interest, writing samples, you need at least one to two, you, and if you're getting advanced standing then there are some additional requirements so make sure to check out those application materials and of course if English is not your first language you need to look into a proof of English proficiency test. So I'll include links down below for more information on the application materials. Now let's get into the application deadline. So January 5th, and this is for 2021, so I would check out 2022. You must make your application payment and submit all your transcripts by this date. And note that transcripts need to be uploaded only after the payment of your fee is made. January 11, you must submit all other supporting documents. So letters of reference, CV, statement of interest, portfolio, and writing samples by this date. So they kind of split it apart here. So make sure to keep that in mind. And submissions are due by 11.59 p.m. Eastern on that particular date's noted. Now let's talk about the facilities at UFT. And UFT has one of the best facilities because they got a new architecture building. They're able to accommodate PhD students, master students, bachelor students, all in one building, which you can't say about the other program. So that's one thing they have as an advantage. And they also have robotics, they have laser cutters, all of the basics. 
and robotics too, which looks fascinating if you're looking into doing some research using robotics and material research and so on and prefabrication and so on, that could be a really helpful thing to have in the program. And when I mean robotics, I mean a robotic arm. So they have one of the best facilities uh, definitely across all of the schools discussed in this video. So I would keep that in mind if that's something that's really important to you. Number 11, Waterloo University, and it's located in Ontario in Canada which is a small town outside of Toronto. It's a few hours away, I believe two hours away or hour and a half from Toronto. So it is quite remote. I would say that's one of the disadvantages of the Waterloo program. It's so isolated. Even the architecture building is isolated from the overall campus as well. So it is a bit of an isolated program. But nevertheless, it's still a good program and there's still some good attributes about the program that you should take into consideration. Now let's talk about the program length. Now the program is a two year program and they also offer a co-op program so you're able to work and study at the same time and get some practical experience. Now the program does require an undergraduate degree in architecture, so you need to have a background in architecture in order to be eligible for the program. Now let's talk about the admission requirements into the program. So you need to have a four year honors pre-professional undergraduate degree in architecture. So they do not take students that do not have a background in architecture and you need to have a minimum overall average of 75% in order to be eligible for the program. Now let's get into the application materials. You need to have a portfolio, a resume, supplementary information form that I recommend of course checking out their website and their program and I'll include a link down below and transcripts, references, you need at least two and you need to complete if English is not your first language, the English language proficiency ELP as part of your application materials for the program. So I'm going to include a link down below with more details about the admission requirements which I recommend you to look into further. Now let's get into to the facilities. Now they offer a wood shop. They also have digital fabrication tools such as a CNC router, 3D printer, and laser cutter. So they basically have your basics that you would need to do models and to do some studies as well. So they have all the basics that you would need to get started. Number 12, and this is a recently accredited program, is the Laurentian University and it's located in Sudbury, Ontario. Again, this is located outside of Toronto, but if you're looking to be with in the city but a little bit further out but still close this could be an option for you the program is a two-year program and you need to have a background in architecture so you have to have an undergraduate a pre-professional degree in architecture in order to be eligible for the program now let's talk about the admission requirements so as part of the program you need to have a pre-professional undergraduate degree in architecture in order to be eligible for the program applicants who have a four-year degree in architecture or closely related fields such as environmental design from a non-pre-professional program will be considered for acceptance into the architecture qualifying year. So you won't be considered directly into the MMARC program, you will be considered into the architecture qualifying year since you don't meet the CACB requirements and you basically don't have a pre-professional architecture program. So the architecture qualifying year is designed to allow the applicants to obtain the professional MARC degree over a three year period. So instead of doing a two year program, you would be doing a three year program while ensuring that the accreditation requirements are met by the CACB. So basically, instead of doing two years, you would be doing three years. Now, in order to be eligible into the program, you need an overall GPA of at least 70% and that is the minimum requirement in order to be eligible into the program. You also need three letters of references, a current a curriculum slash resume. You need a one to two page letter expressing what areas of design you wish to focus upon for your graduate work, including any particular professors you may want to work with. So I would recommend checking out the website and the program and look into the different faculty members and see if any of their research aligns with your interests and some of the design work that you would like 
like to do. So for those that hold or will hold a Bachelor of Architecture and are continuing into the MRC program after the program, you must submit as well a design portfolio showing your creative and design skills, technical knowledge, relevant professional experience, and the portfolios can be submitted in a physical format directly to the school. For those who hold or will hold a Bachelor of Architectural Science, a BAS, and are continuing to the MRC program after the program at Le Warntien, you must also submit a design portfolio showing your creative and design skills, technical knowledge, and relevant professional experience. Now, for those applying to the MRC program from outside of the Bachelor of Architectural Science, the BAS program, including those applying for the architecture qualifying year, you must also submit the following. So if you're not applying directly from their program and from their school, then these requirements would apply to you. You need official transcripts indicating your previous pre-professional architectural degree or previous undergraduate degree if you're applying to the architecture qualifying year. You need also a design portfolio showing your creative and design skills. Now let's talk about the facility. Now I couldn't get any information on the facility from their website. So I would recommend getting in touch with the program administrator in order to get more information about the program. Now if you're looking into the top three architecture programs in Canada, I would recommend checking out this video here. Now if you got a lot of value out of this video, make sure to like the video. And of course, if you wanna see more content, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, bye.